Hello there, YouTube. Uh, hope you liked uh, my last video. Um, again, it wasn't meant to be serious. It was supposed to be meant satirically. If you haven't watched it, don't or do. I don't. I don't care. I'll just keep making videos anyway. So doesn't matter. Uh, this video is going to be a serious one, and it's going to be uh, another group's video about advantages and disadvantages. But I'm not going to talk about all the disadvantages and advantages that are in the book as what they are and go into great detail. Instead, I'm going to talk about how advantages and disadvantages um, create a more realistic and immersive character, a, a more realistic role-playing saga or adventure. How it can make your character um, deeper rather than just being uh, like in most systems, here's your class, here's your level, here's your race, here you're just stats on a page. There's no the, there, there's no uh, humanity to it, for lack of a better word. Um, because if you if you think about it, what, well, what most role playing games are is is the emulation of the stories that have been told through the ages. Whether it's Gilgamesh or Hercules, or even Robin Hood or King Arthur, they're these stories of heroes that are always not just even told to children, but are just the common folklore that even today some of these names. Um, could be hundreds if not thousands of years after the the stories were originally made up they're just being told over and over again what makes them so attractive is not that these heroes are like Superman and well actually Superman's a bad example because he does have a weakness kryptonite but um, is that they're not all-powerful beings is that they're human and flawed uh, they they have these great skills or or talents or superhuman uh, strength or intelligence or reflexes something that makes them more than a mere mortal that that sets them apart from your your average uh, peasant or plebeian if you will and. In, in GURPS, this is reflected not just in having high stats or having high skill levels, but very specifically in in your advantages. Your advantages when you're making your GURPS character, not just, oh, you know, this may, fearless might come in handy. I'll write that down. Don't, don't take things that are just handy to have. Don't write whatever kind of advantages you might think could be useful. Does it fit the character concept? You're, if you're making a hero and you want to play a heroic character, you should have advantages that give you a benefit and fit in context with your stats and your skills to make a, a flesh and blood lived character rather than just having, uh, again, your, your stats on a page. You have you have real superhuman definable abilities. Maybe you have quick quick reflexes. Okay, you, you know a high dex and certain skills might kind of reflect that. But you know if if you're a say from the old west, you're a quick draw artist or something, and you have uh, lightning reflexes, then maybe having a high skill and just having a high dex don't cut it for you. Maybe you really do want that epic level of uh, almost superhuman or if, if it is meant to be a, a more heroic or cinematic campaign um, genuinely superhuman abilities where it's it, it's there. It's, it, it's not uh, a trick of the old west. It, it really is an inhuman feat and that is reflected by having uh, the right advantages. And this can be anything, um, like I said, I don't want to list off all the advantages, but this could be anything from um, not just mental or physical dis advantages, but, but certain social 
advantages, which um, as the book uh, defines it and expands on ideas like having a, a group of allies or a sidekick, that's something that's uh, a, a heroic uh, a heroic advantage that isn't isn't easily defined just by your stats and your skills alone and that's what advantages are there are things that don't fit into those two categories that make you more than just the average person that make you a hero the other part of that is disadvantages which still make you a hero well if you're thinking well I just, how is being you know, how does having a disadvantage make you a hero? Because some of the disadvantages in the book include things like having an enemy, being terminally ill, which is a real hard one to role play. But if you have a good GM and you have a passionate player, you can you can easily work that into a story. Or um, something like having a missing arm or missing leg, a physical disadvantage, or maybe. Um, you have uh, PTSD. There's the post combat shakes is a disadvantage in the book, which gives you considerable points back. But these are human flaws because all these characters that you that you hear growing up and people have heard for generations, they're they're human characters. They're flawed people. You know, King Arthur was was not perfect. Yeah, he was the the greatest knight of the land until he met. Lancelot and he named him his champion but they had an affair it, King Arthur's wife cheated on him and he got mad and it threw the kingdom into disarray he is flawed he is a person so is Guinevere and so is Lancelot they're, they're flawed heroes that's, that's why we can relate to them because they're not they're not up here they're not gods or, or demigods or some kind of deity they're, they're people that we can relate to and as a player if this is your character that you're making. You want somebody that you can relate to. It's very difficult to play a perfect person if you're not a perfect person either, which I'm I'm really going to assume that you aren't. Um, if, if you are, you need to see a psychologist or start a religion because everybody is flawed. And that's what makes heroes is not just their their advantages or their skills or perks or feats or whatever uh, your, your system is running wants to describe it but really one of the, the strongest aspects I've found of GURPS that can really make, make, make characters into not just stats on a page but real characters, actors in a drama is, is their disadvantages. What are their, what are their flaws? Maybe they do have uh, that enemy that keeps recurring through the story. Maybe uh, they they actually are uh, terminally ill and they have a set amount of time where they have to, you know, maybe they've given themselves a goal that, you know, before my character passes away and kicks the bucket, um, I, I want to get this, this, and this done. And that can be a great motivator for the right kind of player. And it makes them real. Not real as though you're you 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 just kind of envision them in your your head it's like yeah I can see that but when everyone's interacting around the table your 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 advantages and your disadvantages and the, just the boring stats on a page are no longer uh, a reflection of your character you you've built up a personality you've, you've built up uh, a, a character concept you have a solid character concept where your advantages and your skills and your abilities offset your disadvantages yet at the same time complement them. You're not just um, <clears throat> we're counting out there. Not just um, just advantages and disadvantages as being kind of two separate entities. They really should actually complement each other um, because if, if as I if you have a solid character concept, uh, your 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 whole concept itself, not just simply the advantage disadvantage dynamic, um, you know that that it should be a, a 
a, a, a I don't want to say complementing again, but your 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 different aspects of your character should relate to each other. You know, maybe maybe um, you've made uh, a police officer that's also a, an alcoholic, or, and this you know alcoholism is a, a serious problem. The the game reflects that as being a serious problem, not just um, in the fact of kind of the little details, but in its overall scope. It, it is an addiction where you are spending money and you are sometimes under the influence of a substance that can affect your decision-making ability and your physical well-being. And, um, and if, you, if you are a police officer and you're drunk at work and you've got to use your, your firearm to 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 stop somebody, you know that that ability is going to be inhibited. But if you have a solid character concept, okay, you you know you're you're an alcoholic. So maybe um, maybe maybe an advantage is that you have a a a, a friend on the force, or or maybe um, a a patron on the force that that turns a blind eye when when things go a little bit bad or can get you out of jams or something like that. You you don't specifically make your advantages and disadvantages to counteract each other because then there's no point. But if you're if you have a solid character concept and you're a creative player, you can use your abilities and and uh, attributes of the character to get around that situation when your disadvantage comes up because everybody is flawed but not everybody is constantly being dragged down by their flaws if that was the case human society simply would not exist and just like a real person uses their abilities to get out of situations or uh, avoid their weaknesses. Like a, a, a doctor may not know anything about auto mechanics. Well, he offsets that by being a good doctor and having a good income where he can pay a mechanic to do that work for him. That's a disadvantage of his. He's mechanically um, ignorant. That That's his disadvantage. Uh, so he, he, he's offsetting that. If um, another disadvantage, as I said, could be uh, post-combat shakes, which essentially is PTSD. If you if you make a character that has that as a flaw, then you're probably going to be um, avoiding combat as much as possible, which I know is blasphemous among some circles. There are people that think, oh, we didn't really roleplay if there was no combat. I don't subscribe to that theory, and I feel that the uh, People over at Steve Jackson Games and Steve Jackson in particular don't subscribe to that either. That you you don't have to have combat all the time, and if you make a solid character that really doesn't have any strengths in combat, and that is their weakness, whether it's just simply having low stats as a disadvantage, or simply having a, a low health or very few hit points, then they'll do things outside of that. They won't they won't enter into combat. They won't antagonize people in such a way or if they do have those sorts of skill or sorts of, of disadvantages and lack of combat skills if they have a solid character concept they're probably going to have healing skills or diplomacy skills or something that would allow them to still participate fully in the game but not directly in combat because that is their weakness they're not good in combat but they heal the party afterwards or maybe they they talk that guy out of uh, attacking the party or uh, convince the the troop of town guards that haven't been paid in months that you know there's probably better people to fleece or, or, or whatever when they enter in town and it's it, it should be all all inclusive like I said it, it should complement each other but not offset each other and I've I've kind of noticed over the years with uh, running and, and teaching people who are new to the GURP system uh, 
how it works is instead of just thinking advantage disadvantage is kind of these two unconnected um, aspects of the character they really should be complementary and instead of looking at them as advantages and disadvantages think of them as strengths and weaknesses and if you're thinking of them that way it'll probably be easier for you to form a character concept as you're skimming through the book just some thoughts I had uh, if you enjoyed it, like it, subscribe, leave comments below. Thanks for watching.